Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm going to be reviewing the Calphalon uh, Temp IQ non grinder version. It currently retails for $2.99 on Amazon. If you're interested, check the link below. Uh, I've noticed that there haven't been any proper reviews on YouTube for this machine. Uh, so when I was searching uh, for information about it, um, I was really disappointed that there were no proper reviews. Um, so why not help you guys out and uh, post the first video. Now, it comes with a 58 millimeter portafilter, which was a big sell for me. Um, it is on the cheaper side. It is uh, out of aluminum, which uh, does not retain the heat as well. Um, there's also a problem with it being connected to the plastic handle with glue. Uh, some of the Amazon reviews say that uh, if you do tend to use your portafilters more aggressively, you may have issues with it breaking. However, I haven't had any issues so far. Um, it also comes with two pressurized baskets uh, for the two-shot espresso and for the single-shot espresso. It does not come with a single-walled uh, basket. It also comes with a 12 ounce uh, pitcher. It, you know, it's not the best, but it gets the job done. Now for the machine itself, we have a steam wand that uh, rotates around, I would say 90 degrees. So it has some space to move around. Um, it comes with a water holder. Here's the grill, it deattaches. A decent size. Then we have the uh, empty knob over here to let you know when you need to empty the water tray. Now you could store your two baskets right over here and they're good to go. Also if you see this red little pin, it's a uh, cleaning pin where it comes with uh, two little needle like things that helps clean uh, out the steam wand if there's any dried milk that needs to be cleaned. Or the pressurized baskets due to them having only one exit hole. If for some reason there's a coffee ground stuck in there, you can always clean it out, which is, which is great. Now for the top of the machine, we have a all plastic um, warming tray, uh, which is, you know, does a, does a decent job. It warms the cups um, quite well. It also comes with a 58 millimeter plastic tamper. Um, I would definitely upgrade this. It doesn't do the best job. Um, coffee grounds tend to stick to plastic more than to metal for some reason. Um, I'm just not a big fan of this tamper, but it'll get the job done. There's a little holder over here for it. Now, we also, if we move to the back, we can see the water storage which holds two liters. It conveniently opens over here and you could take it right out. Now while I have the uh, water container out, I do want to talk about one thing that seems to uh, be coming up a lot on Amazon reviews about water uh, leaking all under the espresso machine and people attributing that to, a, to to the boiler being broken or something of that nature. However, I've noticed when I got this machine, there was a red uh, plunge on the water connection. And I don't know why they do that, but it was there. Uh, in the instructions, it doesn't talk about it whatsoever. There was a uh, sticker over here that I removed uh, that said to remove it before use. I don't know if that's a recent addition by Calflon. Maybe they read a lot of the reviews and decided to uh, tell that to people, but I think that's what the issue is. People weren't paying attention and they didn't remove the red plunge. And because of that, uh, water leaked all over. So I think that's the major reason. I do not think it's the uh, machine being broken, but I may be wrong. Now back to the front of the machine. We have a, a switch knob over here that goes through different settings. There's, uh, by default, it's on the ready setting, then the steam, then the hot water. Then we have the one shot 
uh, automatic preset and the two shot automatic preset. Um, and then we have the on and off uh, button. Now this machine does allow for manual uh, control over your uh, water dose of the shots. So for example, if I switch to the one shot with the auto option, it's going to stop after a certain amount of preset automatic water is dripped into your cup. Uh, but if you activate and toggle the manual option, you can preset it for, I believe, up to a minute of uh, water. I will not go into detail how to activate it. It is in the manual. And it's quite simple to understand. But if you do want a video, guys, uh, make sure to let me know in the comments below, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Now, with the steam and hot water option, uh, what you do is switch to the steam position, and the steam wand warms up, removes all water, starts steaming. Then you return it back to the ready position and you're ready to steam your milk. Uh, with the hot water, it's the same process. Ready, and it's hot water. More about the um, portafilter baskets. Um, pressurized portafilter baskets are not the best. Um, they will do an okay job at producing espresso, at compensating with you know, questionable grind sizes. However, I do plan on uh, getting a single walled non-pressurized basket. Uh, sadly, Calflon does not sell accessories for this machine. They could be definitely uh, making accessories for this product and um, building a customer base around this machine. I think it's a missed opportunity. However, the Breville 58 millimeter uh, portafilter basket uh, seems to fit this uh, this portafilter. At least that's what I read on a couple of forums because once again, sadly, there's no YouTube video that goes into detail about this machine. Also, another gripe I have with this uh, portafilter is um, it has three connecting knobs, as you can see. And that's a bummer because most 58 millimeter uh, portafilters that you can buy in the market have only two uh, connecting knobs, which means, as I said in the beginning of this video, this is a cheap portafilter. If you wanted something better, I have not yet found any replacement that would work with this machine. So if you guys have this machine and you found some 58 millimeter with three knobs, uh, please let me know. I'm going to proceed to uh, make some coffee and show you the uh, process and maybe show you some of the results if you have questions about that. It does have a built-in PID, so the temperature control is, is decent on this machine. Um, it comes with pre-infusion, which is also nice, especially for this price point. Once again, it's $299. Some of the Amazon reviews, the people saying that Steam One either outputted low pressure or extremely high pressure and it was unusable. Um, what I've noticed is when I got the machine, the end of the steam wand was a little bit loose. It wasn't screwed in fully. And uh, I think this is another thing that could be attributed to negligence where people don't pay attention and the uh, end of the steam wand is not fully screwed in because of that, it's playing around with the pressure. Obviously, I think Calflon should do a more careful uh, job of making sure everything is perfectly tied in uh, perfectly screwed in but if you do pay attention to the machine when you get it and make sure everything's good um, it will perform just fine. Now I'm going to turn it on and it's just a simple click now it's going to start flashing that means it's heating up the machine. Now when it stops flashing and the ready light turns on that means you're ready to brew and it's hot enough for espresso. And while this is heating up, I'll address another thing I saw in the um, Amazon reviews, specifically about the um, bars of pressure in the pump. It does say it's 15 bars of pressure. Now, some people said that it's not; it, it can't produce proper espresso with a normal uh, non-pressurized basket because for that you need nine bars of pressure. But I think people are misunderstanding uh, one thing, it's that yes, the a pump itself produces 15 bars. The point when it reaches the group head, it actually dissipates to around nine bars of pressure. Uh, now we're just going to uh, prepare our coffee. I've got everything set up. 
um, I do have the uh, double shot basket ready to go. Um, we are sadly using Prairie Ground Coffee. Um, my grinder has not come in yet, so I had to resort to this. Um, it'll do an okay job due to this being a pressurized filter and uh, it's more forgiving, um, but you won't get as good of a shot um, compared to freshly ground, properly ground coffee. Uh, also, I got this on Amazon. It's the Weightman scale for coffee, and it's quite accurate. The price is very acceptable. Um, I think it's going for twelve dollars right now on sale. I'm not sure, um, but I think the original price was around twenty dollars. Even for the twenty dollars without the sale, I think it's a really good deal. Um, I didn't find any uh, accurate scales for that price range, but if you are interested in accurate, budget-friendly uh, scales for espresso. Um, there's a link below. You could check it out. If, if you're wondering, why would I need a scale? Well, uh, you need an accurate reading of, uh, of the weight, of how much you're putting in it and how much you're getting out um, to, to have consistent shots. Um, and that's very important because if you're randomly putting an amount of coffee into the porter filter and randomly just getting a certain amount back in liquid, uh, then the, the shots might not be as consistent and great. So, so it's a very uh, helpful tool. It also has a timer. Uh, the only thing with pressurized filters, the timer is not really helpful in this case um, because of the extremely high pressure that would not be present in a uh, normal filter. Uh, so we're not going to be really relying on the time output here, but we will be relying on how much coffee we put in and get out. And I'm planning around 18 grams in, maybe 36 to 40 out. All right, we've gotten the desired amount of coffee thanks to the scale. Uh, we've tamped it, and we're good to go. All right, we're going to stir the pour filter. It does require uh, you to hold the machine. It does require a decent amount of effort to put it in. I wouldn't say it's anything crazy. Um, I had experience with using the Breville Bambino. I'd say it's about the same. These are lighter machines. It is a little heavier than the Bambino, so it won't move as much, but you still have to, you know, Hold it down a little bit. Now we'll get our scales ready and we'll take our six ounce cup, which is about what you want for a cappuccino, which I will be making right now. We've got our espresso. The crema looks nice, um, but it is a pressurized filter, so uh, I've heard that the pressurized filters exaggerate the crema, um, even though the coffee may not be good, so just keep that in mind. But aesthetically, it is it is pleasing. Uh, the time output, as you saw, was nowhere close to the 25 to 30 second mark, which is um, sort of a go-to for espresso extraction. However, we are using pressurized filters and the time output isn't isn't very um, important due to the artificial pressure created by the one hole coming out of the portafilter basket. Step two is the frothing process. We are using whole milk, which uh, is a little easier to manipulate when it comes to frothing. We're going to get the steam wand uh, ready to go. So it will blink, that means it's heating up.
and we just switched it back to the ready. Now it's ready to go, and we'll start frothing the milk. All right, and as you can see, the steam coming out, that's uh, ex excess pressure being released. We're gonna get ready to go here. Always wipe down your steam wand because that milk gets uh, sticky real fast. And, uh, purge your steam wand, and we're good to go. All right, we got our milk. Now we just gotta get it to a texture uh, that kind of looks like wet uh, paint. I would say we're about there. I mean, it's not perfect. I'm still getting used to this machine and the pressure it outputs, but. Uh, it looks okay. Now I accidentally ended up messing up my uh, lante art, as you can see. Not much to look at. Um, what happened is I got a little too close and the, um, the uh, edge of the pitcher touched the, uh, the froth and due to that it got really all messed up. Uh, still working on my latte art, um, still working on that milk texture, but here you go as you can see. This is what I got. We've got it ready and good to go. Um, I've tried a couple of these already and they come out decent considering that um, you're using a pressurized porta filter and pre-ground coffee, uh, but I think the performance and the flavor will increase uh, drastically uh, when I get my grinder and uh, fresh beans. Now, would I recommend this uh, machine? I think it's not a bad deal for the money. It is $299, uh, as I said previously, which um, with the functionality it offers stands out in the market currently. We only have the Dedica a DeLonghi Dedica that is around that price range and um, as far as I know uh, those are known for um, constant failure and malfunction. If I do notice any performance issues with this machine I will release a video I'll make sure to inform you but um, overall it has a four and a half star rating on Amazon I haven't seen any issues with it so far I'm pretty happy with the purchase. I think it's a great bang for your buck. If you are interested in getting the Calflon Temp IQ non-grinder version, um, I will have a link in the description below. So there's obviously a version with the grinder uh, that I believe retails for $500 or $600, uh, but I can't speak for the performance of that grinder for the performance of that machine, but I'm well pleased with this purchase. Thanks for watching. Uh, there haven't been any proper in-depth reviews on YouTube for this machine, so I decided to go ahead. I uh, hope this helps you um, have all the info you need to decide if you want to get this machine or not. Um, I heard the Breville is coming out with a similar priced machine, but it's going to be much smaller. It's going to be um, a pretty much teared-down version of the current Bambino. Um, so I just went along with this due to that 58 millimeter porta filter and the functionality it has. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, uh, leave a comment below with any advice or questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them.